Registered Phenomena Code 124 Object Class Omega Purple Hazard Types Sapient Regenerative Incorporeal Transmutation Contact Audiological Containment Protocols RPC-124 is to be stored within a 5m by 2.5m BACU-A3A with an installed mechanism for converting the Faraday cage into an electromagnet. A version of the Biological Anomaly Containment Unit, equipped with a Faraday cage, used for holding telepathic and metaphysical anomalies. Proximity alarms are to be installed along the interior walls of BACU-124. Alarms are to be programmed to trigger the electromagnetic current for the Faraday cage. Guards for RPC-124 must be on a near triptan. RPC-124-1 and RPC-124-2 are to be stored in separate ACU-A3As, sized 8 m3 and 1 m3, respectively. Onira Tripton is to be employed for observation of RPC-124-1 and RPC-124-2. Testing with the RPC-124-3 instances contained within RPC-124-2 requires permission from human resources. Due to the ethical implications of RPC-124-3 experimentation, Due to information obtained in Addendum 124-1, the Global Directorate has deemed that containment of RPC-124 would be a far greater threat to normalcy than RPC-124 itself. Therefore, RPC-124 is to remain uncontained indefinitely. RPC-124's location is to be monitored routinely for security. Should sightings of RPC-124 cease, or reports of ghost encounters increase in frequency. An available MST squad from Foxtrot 4, Hotel 1, and Sierra 8 are to head to RPC-124's last known location. Squads are to presume worst-case scenario, and that RPC-124 must be found and rescued before a repeat of Incident 124-1 occurs. Description. RPC-124 is a bipedal latentous entity, bearing an appearance similar to that of a human skeleton, with the exception of the skull, which is identical to that of a Canis aureus. Entities that trigger anopticin neurotransmitters in the brain, effectively making them invisible. Jackal RPC-124 wears a ragged black hooded robe, and was discovered carrying a scythe and satchel hereafter referred to as RPC-124-1 and RPC-124-2 respectively. RPC-124 is composed of an unidentifiable material, with properties similar to electromagnetic radiation. Researchers have hypothesized that this material is composed of non-baryonic matter, resulting in our instruments being unable to analyze it. Direct contact with RPC-124 causes living tissue to rapidly die and decay. This effect spreads through an organism at a varying rate depending on the level of consciousness, spreading through plants the fastest and humans the slowest. RPC-124 is capable of passing its body through solid matter, which it uses to reach into human subjects, an extract and amorphous mass, referred to hereon as RPC-124-3 from their bodies. RPC-124-1 is a site composed of the same unidentifiable substance as RPC-124. The blade of RPC-124-1 is intangible, and is capable of extracting an RPC-124-3 instance from a person without leaving a trail of dead tissue. Extraction of RPC-124-3 invariably results in the death of the subject, regardless of method. RPC-124-2 is a satchel containing RPC-124-3 instances. RPC-124-2 appears to have an infinite storage capacity. RPC-124-3 instances are shapeless masses that are constantly in motion. They are also luminescent, and change color in response to different stimuli, 
implying a degree of sentience. It is hypothesized that RPC-124-3 instances contain a person's consciousness, which is why life signs cease upon removal of RPC-124-3. Addendum 124-1 Following containment, RPC-124 repeatedly requested to be released. While such requests are typically ignored, RPC-124's requests warn the consequences of apocalyptic proportions. An interview with RPC-124 was scheduled immediately to determine the legitimacy of its warning. Interview Log 124-1 Interviewed RPC-124 Interviewer Dr. Forward Dr. Set up an interview desk in front of RPC-124's containment chamber. Begin Log Beginning Interview 124-1 Purpose of interview is to determine nature of forewarned threat. If you would like to state your name for the record, please do so now. You've given me so many names. I sometimes forget what my name is. Here, I believe you call me the Reaper? Not the most colorful of names, but it fits, I suppose. The Reaper? Are you referring to the personification of death? The Grim Reaper? That's the one. So, you're… death? Yes. I see. Sorry, I'm having a hard time believing that. Are you telling me that you're responsible for collecting the dead? Yes. Well, no, not entirely. It's a bit of a long story, one I don't have the time to explain. Listen, I need to get out of here. I'm already way behind schedule. 603 people are already on their deathbeds. Make that 604. I'm afraid we're going to require a bit more of an explanation than that, Mr. Reaper. What do you mean by not entirely? <sighs> Where do I even begin? I suppose it all began a couple millennia or so ago. Back then, I was known as Janapa. I was born into a family of gods. Father led our followers to victory. Mother watched over the dead, yada yada yada. You know how it is. We were all led by Ra, the oldest and strongest of us. And we were regarded as gods by the people. Life was good. Then one day, he showed up, plaguing our people. We tried to stop him. It could hardly be called a battle. It was a massacre. I only survived because I begged for mercy. Traded my pride for humility. Royalty for servitude. He spared me, but ordered me to prove my submission to him. I... <coughs> I understand that you're upset, but I must ask you to continue. He made me kill my own followers. Do you have any idea what a follower means to a god? They are our lifeblood. They give us strength. And... And... It went against everything I had been taught. But you did it. Of course I did it. What choice did I have? Do you have any idea what it means to kill a god that's still being worshipped? Even another deity cannot do such a thing, and yet he did it like it was nothing. It would be folly to resist his authority. He is so powerful that even his pronouns are capitalized. Pronouns! I can't match that kind of power. Okay, this is quite the story, but what does any of this have to do with why we should let you go? Because he made me his harbinger of death. I am responsible for collecting the souls of the dead. If I don't do my job, people can't pass on to the afterlife. You'll have spirits floating everywhere, drifting about aimlessly. You know how many ghost stories have resulted from me failing to collect a soul quickly enough? Imagine that, but for everyone. I see. Thank you for your time, Mr. Reaper.
I'll look into your claims and will respond accordingly. End log. Closing statement. Following interview, Dr. checked with the ACI for an increase in paranormal activity. Authority Central Intelligence. They confirmed that reports of ghost encounters has increased drastically following the capture of RPC-124. A report was filed and submitted to the Board of Global Directors, who approved the release of RPC-124.